Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Evolutionaries Discuss Forum where we're talking about how to create a world of love, peace, joy and harmony. And No Manono Isaacs is on the call and she's very kindly agreed to do an opening alignment for us. So over to you, No Manono. I call upon the Council of Crystalline Light, Crystalline Beings, Crystalline Light to purify and cleanse the energies surrounding this meeting, creating and manifesting the creator instead. Thank you. I realized after I set up this theme for this week that embedded in that statement of how to create a world of peace, joy, love and harmony is the belief that it doesn't actually exist so I'd like to start with you, actually, Paul, because I remember you said at the Tiringham Summit, the golden era is already here. On one level, uh, of course, we can look out in the world and see that um, there isn't peace. There's, there's wars going on. There, are, um, there is disharmony and so on. And we can see that's an actual fact of this three-dimensional, four-dimensional um, dream world. That actually exists on the one hand. And then there's a place in all of us where that just doesn't exist, where um, we're in our center, we are aligned with consciousness and it is peaceful, and there is harmony. So all of us are carrying that, um, we're not necessarily manifesting it. And then on, on the, back in the, the four dimensional world, here we are uh, longing uh, for everyone to experience um, what we are creating for ourselves. And um, the, the, the yoga movement, the tantric movement, uh, the shamanic uh, peoples, um, this uh, whole new age movement um, has chosen to, to create uh, peace, joy, uh, love, harmony, and is doing a wonderful job. Uh, here we are uh, with these centers of light becoming stronger and spreading out uh, throughout the world. So um, the Raja Yoga viewpoint is, uh, is that uh, if we embody in ourselves uh, this uh, joy, harmony, love and peace, uh, then that's the only thing we can do because anything else is violence. Trying to change people's minds when they have their own opinions, uh, trying to make people do things they don't want to do, um, and uh, any trying to fix it uh, is really violence. So we're in, a, we're in a living a golden age if we actually live it ourselves. Then it's true for us, and it doesn't matter what environment we're in. Uh, we can bring that energy. So on the, in the first hand, it's about individually um, living that truth. And then uh, this whole discussion, how are we going to, to make it appear uh, wider in the world, um, uh, that's uh, really dependent, on, I guess, on our own individual gifts and our own individual capacity to manifest. Hi, I, I'm Sandy Hungby, and I work with uh, roses and rose, my, my path of rose alchemy, the way of the rose, to help people open their hearts to the high consciousness and to be way showers and guides for others here. Um, in our journey really to activate and light up the golden heart flame to share that uh, in the world and um, really fascinating really interesting listening to what's being shared here um, around this whole place of you know this this sense of our our experience in a 3d world and what's actually um, being birthed within us, what, what we're being called to within us. And, you know, what I was reminded of is that, you know, the universe has a plan and, and it has a plan of an evolutionary cycle that we contracted to come into to be part of that wave. And we've all come with our specific gifts and 
those aspects of the journey that light us up, that are the, the places in which we feel in the flow and, and on point as to what we bring. But this place of evolution, I mean, you know, we are the evolutionaries and, the, and as such, we're the carrier wave of the universal plan. And so this universal plan of awakening, it feels to me like it's, it's like one heart at a time. It's when we do our own personal work, when we heal those places of love and loss within us, when we uh, open up to the fullness of who we are, um, there is the opportunity for us to really fully activate that which is within us. And it's a lot of, in a lot of ways, it's then a beingness. We t it's not a doingness per se, it's a beingness that is the frequency that is then the carrier wave of what we can take out into the world to inspire and uplift others. And I think that there's, there is so much um, pain and so much discord in the, the world around us that all we can do is keep coming back into center. What's my truth on this? How can I strengthen my alignment to this? And, um, uh, and, and what I can take into the world, what I can share and take into the world. So it's in, it's a powerful point that we find ourselves in, but the work is internal, the work is personal, it's internal work, and that's the only place that we can go to create the shift. I am Nomanono Isaacs, author of Escaping Apartheid, A Letter to My Mother. I am the creator of Nomanono's Recipe for Happiness, and I channel healing energies of Archangel Michael. Um, right now, I have really um, been listening to what the two speakers have said, Paul and Sandy, and I totally agree with them. That for me, the work, I feel that all of this, the peace, the love, the joy and happiness, it really starts within me. It's an inside job. And also, I know that the energies that when we talk about love, we talk about joy, we talk about happiness, we talk about peace, we talk about all of these harmony and all. All of these energies are within us already and we can easily tap into them and then emanate them. What is happening at the moment, what we see in the world, as chaos. Basically, it's a good thing because it needs to come out so that it's then cleansed, cleared, and erased eternally. How long that is going to take, I do not know. But as each and every one of us work at ourselves, we, because we are so connected, we are really, really connected. When I'm angry and resentful and emanate that energy of anger and resentment, it's not just for me, I'm putting it out there to humanity. So all of what we are seeing, I believe that each and every one of us at some point in some level, we have contributed to it. Um, my job is I go around helping people with the horses, so I'm some kind of horse whisperer. Um, because what I see is the stresses of today, modern world living today, the horses and all animals are sensing the same things we sense what's going on in the world. They are aware of the higher a strain of stress and the animals have been, it's been taken out on them. They're getting beaten up through stress just to be first past the line or the highest jumper and it's all to do with money and profile and status and all those things so my my way of doing things is to go around shining as best as I can 
and be soft with it and put a joke in with it and saying, trying to reflect on what they're doing, trying to put that seed into the heads to say, just back off the animals a minute. It's not the animals, it's you. And the animals are fighting back now, Rachel. They're kicking people. They are biting people. And, and that's just dogs and horses as well as any other animal you want. Because they, they're feeling that toxic energy, that nastiness. They don't feel secure in themselves. The other thing, as Paul said about the continuing wars and uh, what is going on in the world, I've come across some people and, and we're all energists. But what I am aware of is that some of these people are so anti-establishment, so anti-love, so anti-joy, that they're using the dark forces to create a disharmony. I've personally come across this myself and I couldn't believe it. But um, the old dark arts are still very, very much at play. And, and it's all about the voodoo and warlocks. And they're using this energy, just like we use ours in a, in a joyful way. They're using it to, to encourage anti-establishment, anti-money, anti-war. And the funny thing is, this man said to me, he says, they're so distracted by mortgages and money. We need a better bartering system in the world. And I looked at him, I said, but yes, but money is a bartering system. And it's got different denominations of the bartering system. <laughs> that is the bartering system. He didn't get it. And he didn't understand what I was saying. And I was aware even the animals around him didn't like him. And this is why, this is why I see it and I sense it. And I can see why animals don't approach other people with joy and love. And they think because they're not aware, these other people are not aware of the, the stuff they're giving out. You know. Jackie, there is a sort of school of thought, the whole Abraham Hicks law of attraction school of thought, which would say, how did you manifest this conflict you know and, and this is I think this is the paradox isn't it of kind of uh, uh, if we are the point of attraction it's like how have I manifested this angry man in my field of awareness and what is he teaching me and what is he showing me and, and I increasingly am um, this is this is my finding and feeling as as with my own journey the more that I was that I've been doing this work realizing that quite often people are being sent to show me all of my own judgment yes and that's the I, only reason that is they're showing me all of my own judgment because yes. ultimately that in unconditional love in pure source energy there is no judgment anger and resentment and hatred they really damage they, dam they don't damage the person that you hate it's you as a hater or person who's angry that is basically suffering. And yeah, I was. had a very interesting teaching about this um, in a medicine journey when I went to Peru. And it basically showed me that any form of, of fight or even judging things as dark and bad yep. is, is also part of the problem because if we hold this golden light energy powerfully enough it transmutes everything that's let's, right let's come to paul on this because um it's it's a really interesting paradox yeah, paul, yeah. yes I, I i think it's such an important and interesting point is um this uh, uh um, th th this boundary between us and the world out there um and uh um, how are we going to be effective? Uh, as we work together, when we're working in groups, um, my approach, and I, uh, you asked us to say something a little bit about the work we do. One of the things that I work with is um, creating sustainable community or creating um, sustainable and harmonious um, uh, group work. And so if you have a, um, a group that wants to um, protect, 
uh, then really if you can build in the values into that group of um, uh, harmony and um, cooperation into how you work together and particularly some a great tool like nonviolent communication um, and certain values that uh, not talking about each other behind each other's backs and very practical values if you can build those in to the organizations then um, these uh, as you say sort of dark forces which we all have um, uh, can be um, kept in check because we agree to this way of working together and I think this is fundamental in us working together to create uh, more harmony and, and so on is if we're going to do it together we, we, we need to relearn the skills that the native peoples have had um, and can teach us circle skills listening nonviolent communication and agreements about how we're going to communicate and what the, what our, our core values are in our group and commit to them ourselves not make other people keep to them but um, agree ourselves commit like in the Findhorn common ground which is a wonderful document of 14 points which I would recommend to any group and I share with all the groups I work with is that we have these uh, values that we agree to um, <laughs> remember of the conversation here, uh, that we share these values we work uh, more with circling listening and creating harmony in our groups and this was the point I think we'll bring up is here's a group that is not working harmoniously together we're all capable of getting angry and um, communicating poorly uh, these are skills we need to learn now okay. um, I'm going to come to you Sandy because I'd really like to just uh, get your take on this idea that there are dark energies because I, <laughs> I know that you with some of your work you you came to clear my house and you said there were entities in one of the rooms etc so yeah. uh, it's a fascinating thing of do, do these does this actually exist in in at a metaphysical level well it's interesting because i in my in my previous uh, existence before uh, 2000 i you know i mean i was a couture wedding dress designer for 18 years so i was in this land of love and you know making beautiful dresses and working with numerology and crystals and and uh, sacred relationship was my was my thing and the journey that i then went out on um, in exploring space and uh, this this outer aspect of ourselves, yeah, it took me out on a journey of really looking at um, the nature of the heart field and our attractor factor, and you know what what happens to sort of shadow aspects of ourselves when we when we aren't able to shine the light down within ourselves, and and what is within us can get projected out. But also in in the, in our spaces, we get, we get a, a mix of energies, both in residual spirit energies from previous um, inhabitants and their story. But what I've come to understand as entity energy is created through negative thought form. So. If someone has been in a space and has had uh, a lot of negativity, so we know when we walk into a space when somebody's had an argument and we say, oh, you, the air was blue, or you can cut the air with a knife, you know, at one level, we know this. And what happens automatically is that our energy fields contract to protect our bodies. We don't even have to think about it. It happens automatically. And when we stay in contraction for any long, length of time, we have the potential to get sick because there is no space around in the auric field for the, the energy to move. And if we've got a predisposition to something uh, in, that's sitting in our energy field, it can get, start to get hot because the movement of the chi over it activates it. So we, we can find ourselves creating a physical problem within our within our 3d body so you know this this place of what we're talking about here is is dark energy 
for me has always has a negative emotional aspect to it that over a period of time can get what I would call gloopy. So it's a technical term, gets gloopy. And um, for some people that are clairvoyant, I mean, I'm not clairvoyant, I'm clairaudient and clairsentient. But someone who's clairvoyant may see that as, um, you know, um, a, a, a dark uh, energy being, a tailed being, a, a whatever. Um, it, they will see it more form-wise, whereas for me it's a, it's a sense and a feeling. And the only place that we, 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 can, we can do with that is to come into an observation of it, but it has no concept of love and light. It doesn't have, once it's, it's externalized and it's in that form, it doesn't have that, that field because it wasn't created from that. Yeah. yeah. So it has a spectrum of frequency that is only interested in feeding on more of the same energy. So when that energy barreled towards Jackie, it was to create a response of anger from her so that it fed the energy that came towards her. So in that place of, of her moving to, to the recognition that something was, had come towards her that wasn't of her frequency, she was then called to hold a very strong light field and, and there was no effort to land. That's but just, just to be provocative here for a second, if we're all magnetic um, master manifestors, we are manifesting everything in our reality. So if we are holding the highest vibration, then that is what will show up in our field. And so if, and this is what I, this is the shadow, if someone comes into my, field of like an angry person then it's kind of whoa how have i attracted that in what's the teaching what is the blessing and so taking responsibility for everything that manifests in our awareness because then there's no blame of kind of he's he's wrong i'm right and that's what causes the, the conflict it's like when we say wow i'm responsible for everything that shows up in my awareness and everything is a teaching everything yeah. is source showing me an aspect of my shadow that I, then I, and I take responsibility for that then there's no conflict because I am really getting that I've manifested this person and they are a gift because it's all source in disguise Paul did you want to say something here yes it just brought up for me that um, what Jack is going through is that uh, a certain level is it, not so much about actually what's going on it's about um, on a personal level getting challenges that we need in order to grow I mean we, we are we are spirit and, and we are a, a divine souls um, but it's still got to shine through a human being and uh, we're all faulty human beings you know it, it, it's easy to think that there's there's evolutionaries or conscious people and non-conscious people but um, really we're all in the same boat of uh, yeah. staying awake is a, is a second by second uh, challenge and we can all fall, fall off our perch at any time. So uh, there's that uh, personal challenge to stay awake is with us every moment. Okay. We are also being helped. We are being helped by the inner planes. We are not on our own. And this is the beautiful thing that is happening at this moment for the era of love, for the era of remembrance, because truly the beings of Venus are helping us and they've been helping us all of 2016 and they're on the second phase now in 2017 which is the new beginning. Sandy? <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean I think that this whole piece about what we observe outside of ourselves gives us the opportunity to um, to reflect back inside and say, well, you know, is, where, where is that in me? Where, where is there still work to do in me? And if it, I mean, it's like the, the Buddhist practice of Tonglen, you know, you breathe in that which um, is calling for transformation. So the, this, the, the, there is no the, the thought, thought, like we said in the beginning, the universe has a plan, so, you know, source is never 
never wrong in what it's showing us. And so the question is, what is there in me that still is needing work? Or is the discernment of saying, you know, this is for something for me, for me to observe and for me to act. This is my view on the work of evolutionaries is that we are bringing heaven to earth. And that's, I know you've said this before, Sandy, on a call about um, bringing that higher frequency of pure, unconditional love, bringing that into this dimension. Yes. And yes. that's the ultimate nirvana. Okay. And I think this is really where we're being called this, this, this time to, to really resource and find our inner strength. Now, she, in the Rose Alchemy set, was one of the roses that I photographed at the Alhambra. And she was one of the first of that original impulse, uh, nearly seven years ago now, to, to work and activate the rose energy in the world, to be a voice of the sisterhood of the rose. Now this rose was sitting in a, a flower bed that was not in the sunshine, it was in shadow. And when I photographed her, there was illumination all the way around her. And she said, although I sit in the shadows, I am still beautiful and I wait patiently until it's my time to shine. And I think that this is really the place that we're, we're in. We're, we're, we're fostering this inner path within us we're polishing the diamond, we're, um, we're being forced to deal with, with the discomfort that comes up within us and not shirk away from it, but to go, what is this telling me, what's this about, so that I can be a better uh, mirror for divine light in the world, so I can assist others on their pathway. And, and it's a good thing. It's, we are, I think we are so blessed to be here at, right at this moment with all of this happening and what we are choosing. We're just like, yes, 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 yes. Uh, we, we are really, really blessed. And I think this is also this place where it, when, we, when we open to that, it will show us all that needs to be attended to anyway. Because if we are to bring that pure light in, and then share it to the, in the world, it will show us anything that was with, still within us that is, what is requiring that alchemical transformation. So where, where, that, where our story leads us to gold. Yes, fantastic. Wonderful, thank you all so much for coming on and have a wonderful day. Bye for now. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye.